Three, two, one, go. Hey, welcome to Soap's Corner. I'm your host, Sofia Gutierrez, and today I have the honor of being joined by Jesse Vargas. Jesse, thank you for being here. Sophie, it's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I mm -hmm. hope you like um, my studio garage kind of setup here. I love it. I love <laughs> it. It's authentic and it's exactly what we want to show the public, right? Yep, yep. We, we cleaned up. We try to clean up. <laughs> <laughs> and you got the uh, classic poster back here. You yep. know, it's pretty cool. Pacquiao, yeah. Mayweather, you got Chavez, Oscar de la Hoya. Yeah. yeah this is huge. All my brother. Loves yeah. it. He's the one who got me into it. And then yeah. shout out to Rob. You know Rob, right? Yeah, Rob Hernandez, right? Yeah. Yeah, he's a great guy. And uh, I'm glad you, uh, you were able to connect with him. You know? Yeah. He hangs around with good people. <laughs> so tell me how it all started, how you got into boxing. Was there someone who kind of showed you the ropes or someone that you saw that you're like, oh, I, I want to do this? Yeah, well, um, initially my father just wanted me to be involved with an after school activity. That's how everything started. Mm -hmm. I tried soccer, um, Taekwondo. I love soccer. That was my number one uh, sport to go to. But I found out that we had to run a lot. I didn't like <laughs> run that much. So that's when I made the decision to tell my dad, Dad, it's not for me. I'll finish the league. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm done with soccer after this year. And then I tried Taekwondo. I liked it. Um, I just didn't like the fact that we had to wait so long for us to compete. I just wanted to fight. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I uh, admired uh, John, John Claude Van Damme, that was his name, mm -hmm. in the movie, was it Bloodsport and a few other movies, Soldier, um, it was um, something Soldier, but uh, you know, that's not the point. <laughs> I was looking up to Van Damme and um, you know, one thing led to another, I'm doing Taekwondo and then the instructor kept hitting me with sticks whenever I wasn't positioned right. Uh -huh. just, I had to do this. <laughs> And he would hit me with the stick in my leg. I said, you know what? I mean, I'm getting hit with sticks. I just want to fight. Uh -huh. This is not for me. So when I told my dad after I elevated three belts, um, I ended up just telling him, hey, I'm done. I want to do it. Mm -hmm. And then he uh, introduced me to boxing. And I was fascinated by it. I was fascinated by one-on-one -on -one combat and, and how you have to do it. You have to use technique. You have to use feints, right? Different punches. And, um, you know, it's also a psychological game. Mm -hmm. You really have to psych them out mentally. Uh, play with him, see where he's at. Um, also, understand his strengths and weaknesses for you to defeat him. Mm -hmm. And then my father also uh, gave me an extra incentive, actually. He uh, gave me this film on this man right there, Julio Chavez, right behind you. Yeah, and um, it's just his biography on everything he had accomplished. At that time, um, he hadn't fought Oscar De La Hoya yet, mm -hmm. and he was still doing very well, very admired, you know, one of the best world champions in history and I just said I want to be like him I mean this whole biography just gave you a good a good um, I guess history lesson of what he went through what he wanted to do he wanted to take his family out of out of poverty and I said hey I respect that you know what I can do that too and I want to do that so one thing led to another and um, you know I just became more and more passionate you know as every day went by in the gym once I started sparring I realized how good I was and my dad did as well so that was really um, special, you know. That's when everything just really started, you know. Mm -hmm. It commenced from that that day forward, and they've always supported me. I've never left boxing. And since I was I was eight, I was eight years old at that time, by the way. Oh wow. Eight years old, and I told myself I'd become world champion. Uh, I, I I started doing national tournaments, regional tournaments, state tournaments, and you know I was winning a lot of them. You know I was really good. I mm -hmm. was only 10, 11, and I was sparring guys that were 15 years old. Actually, no. 14, 13 years old, and I was doing pretty good. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And my dad says, hey, this kid, this kid's good. My mother didn't want me to be involved, but my my dad told her, hey, you know, this Jesse's actually really good. Like, he's competing against these older kids who've been there for years, and he's competing with them. Mm -hmm. I think we should give him a chance, and he likes to do it. Mm -hmm. Keeps him off the streets. You know, not, not that I was in the streets, but he just thought, he, the way his thought process was, that keeping a kid, kid active after after high school or after any type of school, middle school, high school, I may, I'm occupied with something positive, mm -hmm. then it's it's for the better of my future, mm -hmm. right? Just to keep them consistent, keep them active, keep them doing something. And uh, yeah, they just kept me there and I never wanted to quit. I always wanted to go to the gym. I hated to run. Oh, little did I know. You know? Yeah, <laughs> I, same here. I'd rather jump rope. <laughs> <laughs> same. So soccer, I left it because I ran too much, said I don't want to do that. 
in training. Mm -hmm. And then I come to figure out in boxing, you have to run 10 minutes a day. Mm -hmm. And when you're eight, nine years old, that's a lot. Yeah. But, you know, um, I thought about it and my father told me, because I was slacking and I didn't want to run, I told him I didn't want to run. He says, listen, you either, if you're gonna do the boxing, you have to run. So you either run to, to be involved in the sport of boxing or I'm pulling you out because I'm not gonna have you being a part of this sport if you just to get beat up mm -hmm. that's not what you're gonna do you're good and you could be better but you need to learn to condition yourself on a daily mm -hmm. and if you're not willing to do that then we'll take you out of the sport mm -hmm. and I said all right I'll do it I do it and I just learned to like it mm -hmm. and then I learned to love it after a while you know I mean mm -hmm. eight years old nine ten eleven twelve thirteen mm -hmm. I just said, all right well this is what I do you mm -hmm. know and it's gonna pay me it's gonna do well and um, I always had this vision of being able to take care of my family financially, you know, giving them a, a, an amazing property, buy my mom her house, my mom and dad, buy them their house, mm -hmm. having, and never have, never having to worry about them working a day in their life, you know, that's what I, that's what really pushed me, mm -hmm. and of course the fame did as well, um, the money, I mean, it all, all goes with the same thing, but mm -hmm. thankfully, you know, um, always stayed grounded, mm -hmm. and my family always supported me along the way, we've had a lot of ups and downs in, in the sport. But um, it's been fun. It's been fun. And I had a lot of people that didn't want to believe in me when I was 14, 13, I mean, psh, I mean every year. Mm -hmm. And I tell my uncles, I'm going to become world champion when I was 13. And I was leaving this little group of friends that he had right after I had told him that. And I heard him say, oh, he's just dreaming. I turned back around. I was like, nah, I'm going to become world champion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I just thought to myself, you'll see, you'll see, you'll see. And I just kept that in the back of my mind because I thought when I become world champion, I'm going to tell them. Like, you see, I told you. Mm -hmm. And actually, I never told him because I didn't care to. I mean, I didn't have to prove anything to him. But everything, all the facts are there, mm -hmm. right? So it's not like you really have to say anything. Like, your actions speak louder than words. And, um, you know, I'm sure he remembers. And, you know, I remember very well. Mm -hmm. Not that I care anymore. But it actually pushed me forward. It actually pushed me to thrive and to actually want to prove them wrong, which gave me a little more incentive to mm -hmm. work harder. That's awesome. And um, I mean, you've been in the game for so long. Mm -hmm. What would you say is the best career advice that you've heard? Best career advice? There's a lot. There really is a lot of advice that I've gotten. Sometimes not so much that, sometimes from strangers, sometimes from, I say the most important is from my family, right? It's like stay grounded, um, no matter how much money you make, know where you came from, um, treat people with respect, respect yourself, you know, demand respect. Um, those are the most important things in my life, you know, because that made me into the man I am now. So they taught me all the great things. And along the way, I gained a lot of advice from, you know, either friends here or um, just sometimes randoms, you know. I've been fortunate enough to be, to be able to listen, to be open to listening. Whenever someone says anything, I'll listen and I'll understand why they said it. I could either take it as positive criticism, which I always do, or it's just, you know, someone trying to do something good for you, and I take it in, and I try to understand it, why they, why it is they said that. If it didn't make sense, I'll, I'll brush it off, and I really, you know, won't care too much to think about it. But if there was some type of meaning behind it that I catch on to, I'll do it right away. Mm -hmm. So that's the good thing about me, you know, it helped me grow. Mm -hmm. But I think it's all started because of my family, the way it's told me, you know, always listen, always respect, because it goes with it. You listen to others because you're respecting them, right? Mm -hmm. You respect them enough to listen. Uh, you respect yourself to... Um, have a certain, a certain level, not only of respect, but I want to say you keep yourself on check. A certain restrictions on yourself, which I've always had. All right, in order to get respect, what is it that I have to do? How I have to act? You know, and um, as I was a teenager, I, I learned to kind of moderate that. Mm -hmm. And it all came because of my parents. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm happy and I'm thankful that they're able to build me into who I am now. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. And um, going back to what you said, how you didn't like to run and all that, but you know, you have to run in boxing in 10 minutes. Last night at dinner, you had said something really important or that stuck to me. Um, you said uh, training camp isn't just the weeks leading up to the fight. Training mm -hmm. camp is, you know, year round. You're always supposed to yeah. stay on your A game. And um, what do you like to do besides boxing? Do you have any other sports that you like to dabble into? when you're not training for a fight, but you know, you're still trying to stay active. Is there anything that you like to? Me is just boxing. I love sports in general. I love to play football, I love to play soccer, um, everything. Uh, but 
I soccer I can't play very much because I don't want to mess up my ankles. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, you might get kicked every now and then. That would take about a couple of weeks out of my training. Um, I love football. I love it. That's, that's my sport. That's what I wanted to be, actually. I wanted to be a pro football player. Mm -hmm. But I figured that I didn't have the size. <laughs> Even though I was pretty tall. I, was, I mean, I was average. I was average uh, growing up. But um, I saw these big football players, wide receivers, 6'2", 6'3". I, my, the possibility of me going up there, very low. Right? Mm -hmm. To be 6'3", my dad's 5'10", my mother's 5'4", 5'5". Uh, so, yeah, I, I put that away. And going back to your saying, I don't do any other sport. I, um, I mean, I play ping pong from time to time, <laughs> um, you know, hand and eye coordination. Mm -hmm. But other than that, I mean, um, my main priority is becoming world champion. And I've always tried to perfect it in different ways. Uh, that mentality that I have that you overheard last night when all of us were together, Rob and right, all of us were talking about this interview, um, it just came out because when I was younger, I didn't understand it well. Uh, I, I was having a lot of success early on, mm -hmm. really abruptly. And um, I just figured, all right, well, I'm only going to train when, when I'm going to fight, eight weeks before. But it was a, very difficult because uh, a lot of time you spent more time losing the weight than actually preparing on different techniques, tactics. Mm -hmm. So I finally understood, now that I'm a little older, that you actually have, have to train year round in order to continue gaining strength, to continue getting better technically, uh, continue to working on um, the game plan, mm -hmm. you know, and then just learning new things along the way. So I'd say that, you know, it comes with time. So mm -hmm. I learned it. And, that's why I was able to give, uh, you know, uh, the gentleman we were sp speaking to yesterday, give him a tip about it, you know, because it's not just about training for the fight, it's about staying consistent and continuing to improve in the long run. Mm -hmm. And what does being a fighter mean to you? Being a fighter um, means a lot to me because it's one person fighting for something. You know, and you have to find out what you're going to fight for. Mm -hmm. um, in that same type of fight, once you're successful in one area, you can take it up into another and another and another because it's so difficult. You know, it really is. It's um, it's exhausting, it's exhilarating, um, and you have to have so much control, and you also have to know how to prioritize your time. Um, it's it's not easy. I I don't understand how a lot of these kids can actually manage to you know, have so much discipline uh, in order to accomplish your goals. I mean, I understand it. I don't, looking at how kids are coming up now, it's hard for me to, it's hard for me to um, envision a kid doing the things that a lot of us fighters, uh, now that we're world champions, went through. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's very easy for kids just to, nowadays it's become much easier for them just to, want it easy, mm -hmm. to, to want things facilitated to them instead of actually fighting for it. Mm -hmm. That's where the word fighter is, right? You fight for something. Mm -hmm. And once you become a world champion, you learn how to fight for different reasons. Um, you know, um, whether it's in your education, you're fighting there. Because in a fight, you have to stay consistent. In a fight, you have to exactly know your intentions, what it takes to get there, and, um, you know, and, and improvise if you have to. Mm -hmm. Right, in education, in, in in a job, anywhere, you know, in, in order to continue elevating. Because if I stay in the same position, I'm not going to become, I wouldn't become world champion. You mm -hmm. have to continue to expand, continue to grow, right, continue mm -hmm. to get better. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's what really is special about a, a real fighter, special about a world champion, is because they're able to improvise, they're able to get better, they're able to want more than to just satisfy, get satisfied just with, you know, one simple accomplishment. Mm -hmm. Or not simple, because some of them might be great, but you can do so much more. Mm -hmm. And how would, how do you say you deal with criticism? Because we all know that there's a lot of talking behind boxing and all that. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with it? With criticism, you know, I thankfully I get a lot of support, so I don't, um, I don't get too much criticism. Mm -hmm. So uh, I guess I handle it well. You know, and uh, I guess, I guess at times you do get some, but um, what do you do? I mean, you don't really, you you don't let it phase you, you know. I'm talking about it now. I'm sure that I've gotten some, but you know, you uh, the negative. If you can't change it to a positive, you toss it in the trash and you don't look at it again. Because mm -hmm. how's it gonna help you? Mm -hmm. It's not gonna help you at all. So uh, now, if it's something that is constructive criticism, 
you look at it and you say, all right, are they right? And how can I improve on this? Right? Mm -hmm. Or how can I touch on this? And um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's about, that's the feedback to get. Yeah, I completely agree with that. Mm -hmm. And you are also running for Congress mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. You know, how is that going? How's that process? Yeah, it's good. It's, it's great. It's yeah. great right now. I mean, I'm looking to represent my community. I'm looking to fight for them in a different way, right? mm -hmm. in a more important way. Um, you know, within these last you know year and a half or so, I got really frustrated with what was going on mm -hmm. in our community, in our nation. You know, and um, I just uh, one thing led to another. And now I'm running for Congress because I want to be able to be a positive impact in my community. I want to benefit you know those who who are having a lot of troubles right now, you know, who are going through different issues. Because the thing about me is that I'm able to understand with so many different demographics in our country, mm -hmm. you know, and that really gives me the opportunity to look out for, um, you know, different communities, you know, and look out for their best interests because I know their difficulties, I know I know their wants, right, their desires, I know what, what, what is really holding them back, you know, and right now um, it seems like our government is taking uh, man, a hundred, too many steps moving back, mm -hmm. you know, instead of moving forward. And um, so I'm, I'm putting my boxing career on hold to actually do some positive for my community on a larger scale. I mean, I've always been the pride of Las Vegas, thankfully, uh, since I turned prof uh, a couple years after I turned professional. I mean, I've been involved with um, different organizations where I'm able to come out and speak to the kids, um, sponsoring a lot of the boxing gyms, just because I want to see these kids, um, you know, um, achieve their goals. I, I want to be a person that, that's able to support their dreams, their goals, their, their accomplishments. And in order for that, I'm just trying to, I was trying to provide them with the materials, right? Mm -hmm. With the products, um, such as boxing, b boxing attire, gloves, bags for gyms. Um, I started a new boxing gym in 2016. It was um, Spring Mountain Youth Camp, right? We donated a lot of things and I was fortunate to be a part of it. And it's just because I had this idea that it's going well for me. You know, I've had success. I mean, let me find a way to help others as well because I would have liked that, you know, growing up. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, I've always tried and give back. And I'm just doing it on a different scale. The thing is this, that we have so many career politicians. Career politicians who, some of them, I mean, some of them created this problem. We, we have some good ones as well. But at the end of the day, we need people that come in from private sector that can understand, you know, our difficulties, right? Not someone that, <laughs> not someone that, that isn't familiar with the real world, with our nation's issues, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? With our community, inner city uh, issues, you know, with business issues, because they never had a business. It's, it's just interesting to me that, you know, you can just get into politics because you studied, you know, education for five years, but you never really understand different people around your, your, your community, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, some came out in the inner cities and I admire them for, for what they were able to accomplish. Mm -hmm. But now, could you relate with people who are business owners? Could you? Mm -hmm. mm, I'm not certain about that, you know? Mm -hmm. And the thing that I bring in is that I'm able to understand different people, you know, growing up in, in Las Vegas, I'm able to understand them coming from different different backgrounds, ethnicities, and, and um, you know, because I was a part of it. I grew up there and I just know that I would be, I would be the right man for the job. That's awesome. And what do you want to be remembered at the end of your career? So as a great, as a, one of the great fighters and also someone who was able to give back to his community, I think for the most part, that would give me a great sense of accomplishment if I'm able to do some great things for, for others, mm -hmm. rather than just myself. I mean, I was able to fight myself out of the, out of the inner cities, you know, out of the, out of the, these tough neighborhoods to being financially well off and having my family in a good position too. Mm -hmm. Now it's time uh, to have to fight for others to have that same opportunity that I had, because mm -hmm. the more I see it, the more we're losing those opportunities. You know, it's just um, I'm I'm not happy with uh, the direction our nation is taking. Mm -hmm. I'm very happy to be here. I'm very happy to. I'm a family of immigrants, so. I'm very happy that I was given these opportunities, you know, um, to be able to reach your goals, your accomplishments, accomplishments and um, all just based on hard work, determination, you know, it's the American dream, anyone can reach it, you know, mm -hmm. uh, our friend Rob and, and his family, I know numerous friends of mine that actually, you know, they, they came up tough, but they were able to come out on top, mm -hmm. you know, and I really admire them for it, 
So how about we share that message and, you know, keep giving those opportunities out to others who, who want it, who need it, who, who not only need it, but want it, mm -hmm. want to work hard to achieve it. You know what I mean? Let's, mm -hmm. let's, make, let's make more Americans strong. That's what we have to do. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? To not only physically, I'm talking about mentally, you know, that, that push them to thrive. So that's where I'm at. Mm -hmm. And I know you said um, you're going to be taking a break from boxing to focus on, you know, running for Congress. Uh, when do you think this next fight or, you know, getting back in the ring, when do you see that happening? Well, they're actually, uh, they're, they're luring me back in. Ah. So um, I may just uh, have another fight early next year. And um, everything's being worked out now. Um, I would, like I said, I would definitely have to prioritize my time. Mm -hmm. Probably, um, you know, focus on my campaign now. And once the fight gets closed, focus solely on the on the fight and the campaign. Mm -hmm. um, after the fight, I would only focus solely on my campaign. Mm -hmm. Primary elections are in June, uh, general election in November. We hope that everything works out in our favor. Thank you for watching Sophie's Corner again. Thank you, Jesse, for being here. Make sure you like, subscribe, and. Follow me on Instagram to see more updates. My pleasure, Sophie. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Jesse, let's see you what ready? you got. All right, let's do it. See, si Sabe. Here you go. <laughs> Give it a try. <laughs> ah! There you go. <laughs> Whack.